Right, I'm going to discuss the uh, Model A radiator, the cooling system. And uh, most Model A's overheat. Uh, and my criteria to tell was whether one overheats or not is if it can go 45 miles an hour for 10 minutes straight without any let up. If you, your car can do that, you have a pretty good radiator. And I would, and I would declare that as a, not an overheating system and one that you could take on tours. Because on some, a lot of these tours, you're gonna we generally go from 40 to 45, but there's an occasion when you're going a little uphill or something, and you, if you can go 45 miles an hour for a solid 10 minutes, you've got a good system. Most Model A's won't do that, and I'm going to show why they won't. Uh, I'll show a lot of facts and, and some of the opinion as far as explaining some of the, the wives' tales and so forth. Now, in looking at these charts, I'm uh, visualizing uh, an engine that's going at uh, the equivalent speed of 45 miles an hour. So we're pushing water through this system uh, pretty fast. The, the water pump is uh, really buzzing pretty Here fast. we have the Model A cooling system. We have the radiator, the lower hose, the engine, the head, the pump, the upper hose, and back into the radiator. What we do know is the pressure in the top tank of the radiator is zero. It's open to atmospheric. That's a fact, starting here. As the water flows through the radiator, there's some restriction in it, and there has to be a pressure drop. And the, there's a pressure drop going down to some lower pressure here as it exits the, the uh, radiator. There's a slight pressure drop through the lower hose, uh, probably not much. Uh, I don't know what the drop is through the engine in the head, but it's probably nothing we can do anything about. Then it hits the pump inlet and goes up slightly above atmospheric, just enough to overcome the pressure drop of the upper hose and then back into the top tank of the radiator. So that's the system. It all operates in negative pressures. The suction of the pump is what uh, gives us the, uh, the flow of the water through the radiator. I don't know the level of these, uh, what, how low of pressure these are, and I haven't put pressure taps in. If you have the energy and equipment, you can measure that. The, it would be easy to measure that lower hose pressure and see what that is. I think that would be the most significant. But here's what we do know. The lower the pressure, the lower the boiling point. At zero PSI, we boil at 212. At minus one, it drops about four degrees to 208. And by the time you're at minus three PSI, uh, we're at 200. Now, I don't know if this is 3 PSI or 6 PSI, but whatever it is, it's a, it's a lower pressure. So you're boiling water uh, around the 200 degree mark. And all engines have hot spots, and certainly the head has hot spots where you can flash that water into steam. Now, if you run antifreeze, these numbers go up a little bit. Uh, the boiling point of an antifreeze mixture, mixture is higher than plain water. So a lot of people tell you they run plain water in the summertime. Uh, it would be better from a cooling standpoint uh, to run antifreeze. You would operate at a higher boiling point. Now, if we had a plugged radiator, this restriction curve here would be much steeper. And that would drive the low pressure of the entire system down. And then you'd have the same pressure drop through there, through the head, the engine in the head and the sad part here is that the hottest part of your engine is the head and that's the lowest pressure uh, of the Model A cooling system so you could be uh, down quite low and if that radiator is plugged you are sucking real hard with that pump not getting as much uh, uh, flow but the pump has to draw that down to its ability and uh, and move the water through there. Now, I've also got uh, a chart here. This is a uh, pressure and the flow. And this is a system restriction curve. If there's no restriction, uh, no pressure, then there's no flow. If you push a lot of water through the radiator or the system, then there's a lot of flow. So you can plot that and you get a system restriction curve. Then you do a pump curve, and the pump 
at uh, if you uh, let the wa water flow through the pump at, at no pressure rise, you get the maximum flow through the pump. As you pinch off the uh, outlet, you reduce the flow and the pressure goes up, and then it gets indeterminate over here once you pinch it off too much. But every system has a pump curve at a certain RPM. Every system has a restriction curve, and this is your operating point. So at that 45 miles an hour, you're operating at a certain pressure and a certain flow. Uh, if you had a smaller pump on there, it would operate at a lower pressure and lower flow. If you had a restricted radiator, it would be up here. You would be operating at a higher pressure, this pressure here, suction pressure, and lower flow, which is all in the wrong direction. Now, we've all uh, heard people say that the problem with the Model A system is that the pump is too powerful and it pumps more water than the radiator can handle. That is absolutely impossible. I got in an argument with uh, Roger Kaufman over this. In one of his articles, he says uh, the pump is pumping more water than the radiator can take. And, and the reason that's impossible is the only water that that pump gets comes through the radiator and the, and the engine. It doesn't, it doesn't get any more water than is, our, that is what has already flowed through the radiator or through the system. So if it flowed through there, it can't possibly be more than the radiator can handle. But I can explain where that uh, thinking comes from. As uh, if the, assuming the radiator is plugged and you're going down to a lower pressure and there's some hot spots in the uh, head or possibly in the engine and it causes the water to uh, pop into a, uh, a bubble of steam, to flash into steam. Once that bubble is created there, now the pump does have a lot more water than uh, than is flowing through the radiator because that bubble is taking the place of the water and now the pump pumps it and it hits the radiator and it starts overflowing. And to combat that, we put the little hose on the top of the um, the overflow, and that's a little band-aid that gives us a little, tries to keep a little more water in the top tank. Uh, the other thing it does is uh, the pump starts pumping, trying to pump steam, and the, the pump is designed to pump a liquid, not a not a gas. So it beats it into a froth, and we're all familiar with that that froth, froth that yellow foam. We open the radiator cap after our car has been uh, uh, overheating and you see all this yellow foam in there. That's a froth of, of uh, air and, uh, and steam and antifreeze and whatever. And uh, what it means is that these bubbles were forming in here. The pump was then taking all the water in front of that bubble and throwing it into the radiator. And that is more than the radiator can handle. And uh, so it, and it causes lower pressure and we get more bubbles, more steam, and we start losing the coolant through either the spewing out the top or through the little hose. And, uh, and it goes downhill from there. It just progresses. And, and if you're buzzing along at 45 miles an hour, this, it won't take long before you're losing enough water and, and uh, uh, you can tell that you're overheating. Now what we do to combat this, like I said, we put the little hose on the, on the top of the uh, overflow tube. That gives us a little bit higher top tank, uh, a little more volume there to save it. We also uh, cut down the impeller of the pump. And what that does, uh, when you cut down the impeller, uh, cut down the blades on the pump impeller, all you're doing is turning that pump into a smaller pump. And now your pump curve is down here someplace. And what are you doing? You're operating at a little bit lower pressure, a little less flow. That doesn't help, but the lower pressure does because the lower pressure is going to bring this up a little bit. And if you're right in the range of boiling or not boiling, maybe just a little bit is up there. That's why people who have cut down the impeller on their pump said they fixed their problem. Uh, they, they might have. They might have just gone over that threshold because they're raising that pump. The other band-aid we use, we put a restriction 
in that upper hose. Uh, it might be a, a simple plate with a hole in it or a, a thermostat. Well, what that does is that gives more restriction here and takes this pump outlet pressure and builds it up here and then it comes down because you have a restriction there. And the minute you bring that up, you've brought this up, this pressure up too, so that's in the right direction too. So if you put the restriction in there, put a smaller pump in by cutting down the impeller, put that at, those are three band-aids that we all use, and it fixes some things. But the real culprit is this guy. This guy's 80 years old, it's plugged up, and the problem is we can't get a radiator shop to unplug it. Radiator shops don't like taking the top tank off because the minute they do it, the whole radiator comes apart. So what you want is a rotted out radiator where all the tubes are open. The uh, radiator shops tell you they'll back flush them or they'll reverse flush them or boil them or do what. None of that does any good. So you've got to core the radiator out. The new radiators with the new core have smaller tubes in them. And that's fine for uh, heat transfer efficiency. I use less copper and it's a, a more turbulence and a lot of good things. And that's why your modern cores are small tubes. But they, a Model A a cooling system has got junk in it. And those tiny little tubes of the new radiator cores plug up. And you pay $400 and you put in a new radiator. And if you don't clean your system, you've just put in a $400 filter to catch all the crud and plug up the little tubes. The old original Model A tubes that are nice and big, let a lot of junk flow through, that's what we want. But nobody makes that radiator anymore. Uh, I did take a radiator and with a Dremel tool cut two big windows in my top tank and I bent that copper out of the way and I went down through with welding rods and got most of the tubes and freed it up that way and then took it back to a radiator shop and told them to solder it all up and fix whatever leaks I might have caused. That worked and I have that radiator and it works good. And while we're on this uh, subject, I mentioned turbulence. There's another old uh, saying you hear people say that that water flows so fast through that radiator it doesn't pick up any heat. And uh, that's not true. Uh, physics will tell you that the higher the turbulence uh, of a heat transfer device, the uh, better the heat better the heat transfer. So the, it's more efficient. The faster you can run that water through there, the more heat it's going to pick up. The fact that you're flowing a lot of water through there means that the temperature rise of the water is not that much. Uh, but you're flowing through so much more water through there, you're removing a lot more heat. So uh, you can't run water through a radiator so fast it doesn't pick it up. Believe me, it will pick it up and uh, you want to run high turbulence. Now here's something you can try. If you have a Model A in your club and, uh, and it's an overheater, there's no question about it, uh, take, uh, open the hood and uh, put a board between you and the uh, fan so that if the fan breaks it won't hurt you. Buzz the engine up to what you think is about 45 miles an hour. And when you get it up there, open the petcock down in the lower hose. The little petcock where we drain the water. And uh, my guess is, if it's really plugged radiator, that uh, this uh, pressure is so low, it will suck air in. And, once it, and if that does happen, suddenly you'll get air in there. That pump will really pump all the water out, so don't get wet. But... Uh, I want to try that, but I just haven't found the right car yet to try it on. And, and be sure and put the board there because you don't need a fan uh, breaking and hurting somebody. But that would be a good, uh, good test. So, what's the bottom line here? The cooling system, we have some band-aids you can play with. Quite possibly the pump is oversized and cutting the impeller won't hurt a thing. Uh, I don't think you need to do that. You need to get a radiator that flows well. And if we can find a shop that can core them out, uh, that would be worth it because then you know what you have. You know you have a free-flowing radiator 
and uh, your car will uh, perform quite nicely. I, ho I hope this uh, helps more than it hurts and uh, clears up a few things, but that's the way I see the cooling system, and I'm sure everybody won't agree with me, but uh, uh, what you really want is a push-through system. Uh, if you could devise a pump that would take water right out of the radiator and then into the uh, engine, now you're operating above this line. You're uh, operating positive pressure, and uh, uh, that's how it, uh, cooling systems should be designed with a push-through system rather than a suck-through system. Suck-through, you're, you're just lowering your boiling point. So good luck with your cooling, uh, cooling system, and have fun with that Model A.